Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. There are still those two. Hmm. Oh, we finally found a secret. Yeah, I and I failed to disarm the trap. Okay, uh, another. Wait, but the visitor living in a few days. Gal Gaffel, the drunk guard, a local inbred, has wandered onto the stronghold grounds. He is asking for help with his accumulated debts. I guess we could help him out, but why would I help him? You know. Eiffel. I know there's two of you. Ogre and Zola. The problem is I, if I attack one of them, the other one will also rush to towards me, and that's a problem. How may I help? And we don't have anything could use. I mean, I could use dart trap here. I think. Okay. Can I... Let's be... You see, that's the thing. I don't know if we can talk because the last time she straight attacked us straight away. Yeah, she attacks us straight away. Um. Hey, master speaks. Kill it. I will have its hand, hands, its head. I will send watch. Holy power. Oh, holy. Holy shit, that is what I want to say. And. I'm here. Okay, let's do this. Following your you cannot do anything yet. You. You also. Um. But you. Be so kind to do this. He missed. Do it again. Where am I? Why am I here? Okay. Barely injured, barely injured. What is the holy power? I you see, unfortunately. Ooh. It was bad. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot. A magical seal that explodes in the burst of your energy when an enemy comes into contact with it. Yeah, sure. Um, they are fate. Hey, oh, okay, let's use it on him. Come on, take your deep, deep breaths. Uh, no, she's not under. Okay, she is injured. Um, you use healing. Uh, you use again the necrotic thingy. Okay. No, to this. You, as usual, summon him. You summon skeletons. It's a shame that summons don't start attacking on their own straight away.
Okay, but she really is under some divine power, as, as we can see. Please don't win. Whatever you do, don't blow. Mm, one lost spell. Oh, you attack. Well, we are close. Don't worry. Yes, I'm here. Um. By the way, he can also summon skeletons. We did it. And believe it or not, that was the first try I tried this now. So how's the work? Yeah, oh, so this is what he meant. A rusted shield decorated with a many leafed tree adorns the wall. A small engraving at its base reads the Earl of Yenwood. You don't want to look around here to see if I have anything worth picking up, but apparently not. So let's go back to give him the torque. We made it! <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. It is done then. So that is death. Torgal takes in a deep breath. He is silent for several moments. Then it is done. Thank you, godlike. That was not my mate in there. I will not remember her that way. Here. I will not need this where I go. Use it well. Once finery. Hmm? My copper pieces, you little. Mm. Mm. Let's first worry about the um, d -d 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 security. Ooh, light armor. The R three, yours eight, yours ten, twelve, five. Intellect if of intellect. Lore giving. Mm -mm -mm. Tough, wealthy, and well educated. Thou, wealthy and well educated. One Valen noble found himself all but shunned by his peers. He lacked an eye for fashionable dress and had no particular talent for debate. Finding that he could not articulate any portion of his admittedly vast pool of knowledge, while his colleagues held ground debates on the intricacies of animancy, or the state of the Vale and Republics, he stood apart. At last, desperate, the noble turned to a local wizard and requested a set of clothing which might elevate him above the crowd and give him opportunity to prove his wits. The result was a marvel, perfectly fitted and accentuating his features in such a way that he was immediately the center of attention. The nobleman soon found, however, that his plan worked too well. For it was the wizard Randall whose name became associated with the fine clothing, and who found his work much in demand in the coming seasons. Hmm. Plus two intellect, plus two lore, damage reduction. I prefer damage reduction. Okay, how can we enchant it somehow? Uh, not quite. Final body is uh, has enchantment fine. We could add plus one of constitution. Hmm. We don't have diamonds with that. Yeah, we have plenty of those. Proofing, burn proof. Oh, why I can do Oh, it requires level six. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, it's useful to learn those types of crafting. I'm still not willing to fight those two ochres here. At least for now. No one told us that we must kill everyone. Yes. Hmm. 
Now let's deal with the drawing card. What do you want? Hello, greetings, Lady Evna. Uh, I mean, I was hoping to talk to you. I, I'm in a spot of trouble. This one's breath stinks of ale. Very well, let's hear it. You call your allies together and motion for the petitioner to step forward. The thing is, I walked up a few depths in the river and a few other places. More than a few. I haven't got a gun, my lady. I would pay it off if I could. I was thinking. Maybe you know of someone looking to hire or not something. I am willing to work. And all. Fine, I can settle this. Thank you. No, oh, what the fuck. I wasn't sure anybody would care, really. This ought to be enough to settle the debts. Gaffle's eyes widen. It's your... Is <laughs> God keep you, my lady. I'll set out to Aina's first see about paying out what I owe. Won't they be surprised? I'll kill him if he's not bad. I swear I'll find him and I'll kill him. Mm. Okay, why is this? Intent on being back his steps. Oh, well, see it. Okay, as, as we can see, everything is cleared up here now. Sort of. So, now we can continue on our journey. I am sure that we are not equipped well enough for further levels of the maze, as we saw, was the case. But instead, what do we have to do? Time and tide, endless path of snow, during snow, and the final way. Yes. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Thank you, I know. Defiance Bay, this whole thing is Defiance Bay. So we need to go to Wooden Place. This, this piece of music. It sounds just like Lord of the Rings. It gives off the same vibe. No other. Grave. Oop, what do we have here? Forest lurker? Oh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Did I? No, well, it's fine. I'm looking at the levels of his endurance. I, I would prefer the... <laughs> the thing is, I don't entirely understand how this endurance works. Because we... Oh my goodness, that's a lot of them. Uh, of course you don't have any spells. An initial bolt of magical energy from the camera that has four dimension days. Yep. Okay, she must get there first. Um, you do your thing. And no run. What? 
that's a lot of explosions. Yes. You also... Yeah, she can also summon some. Oh, 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 that's bad. I don't think I hit it correctly. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, he's down. type of summon from each of them. in a moment. Because that was a lot. Why are you not? Okay, because he has only health and endurance. Okay. Rest. It also told me that when he was playing this game, or it might have been the second Gloss of Eternity, but that he could stack camp supplies to his heart's content. Hush, Itumak. We'll just wait a little longer. A dwarven woman dressed in skins and hides leans against a road marker. Her face is turned down, her eyes darkened by a thick stripe of face paint. She is sharpening a bone arrowhead with a scrimshot handled knife. Her attention, however, is focused on a bear figuring between her feet. A large white furred fox standing at her heels looks up as you approach. Easy, Ichimak. It's not him. Oh, this outfit may not be flattering, but I am definitely not him. She lifts her head and looks at you. No argument there. It's just not you I'm looking for. Who are you waiting for? Short version. I'm looking for a very, very old friend. I'm not sure what skin he's wearing now, but I'll know him when I see him. Uh, your friend is supposed to meet you here. That's what I heard. Of course, the man who told me so was carrying a staff he claimed was made from dragon bone, but I know Whitewood when I see it. That should have been my first clue. But I had to try something. And, but back up. What does the stranger have to do with your friend? The long version. Here we go. I'm from an island to the far south called Nasitok. I came here looking for a village elder, a man we knew as Persok. I'm a hunter back home, so tracking someone wouldn't normally be a problem. But Persok's trail is cold, to say the least. 
How long have you been looking for Persok? Her painted brows lower and her compact, muscular frame eh, sucks for just an instant. Five years? Why can't you find him? There can't be that many of your people in the dood. He died when I was still a young girl. Forgot to mention that part, did I? I'm looking for his latest reincarnation, which could be anyone. So, you've been searching five years for a stranger you barely remember. Who could be anyone now? That about sums it up. Actually, I know how you feel. Then you have my sympathies. Hopefully, you've got a better lead than I do. She looked at the Atra figure in the dirt. How does the statuette figure into it? She dusts the figurine on her trousers and raises it in her small flat palm. It's carved in the shape of a bear, smooth and round. The polished atra is worn to a dull mat along its arched back and ovoid huntress. A soft glow emanates from within. Cute, isn't it? It belonged to Persaw. Before he returned to the wheel, he left a splinter of his soul in it. Something to help us find him later. As she holds it out to you, you feel wisps of sensation. Not quite memories, but traces of someone. When I left Nasitak, it was completely dark inside. But as I've gotten closer to Persok, it's glowed steadily brighter. Since I've reached the Deerwood, however, it's gotten hard to read. Some days it flickers and goes dark. Others it shines nice and bright for a few hours. But most of the time it looks just like this. I could take a look at it. I've heard that one before. The whole reason I'm standing here is because some so-called watcher from Forked Vale told me he could take a look. For a few Golden Dukes, of course. I was on my way out of the Balmarsh when I heard talk of a traveling mystic who could supposedly see souls. I knew it was a long shot, but what did I have to lose? I went to see this fellow and gave him the Audra figurine. He made a big show of moaning and rolling his eyes, and after I'd given him five golden dukes to lift the shroud, he told me to seek the crossroads in the field between the wolf's lair and the twining trees. Go on. He thought he was being vague, but I know the area well enough to recognize that he meant this place, right between Defiance Bay and Twin Elms. I had a bad taste in my mouth, but my coin was spent and I'd already left an arrow in his knapsack as a friendly warning. Told him I'd come back and leave him with another if it turned out he was giving me the runaround. I've been here a week now. Guess he had the last laugh after all. May I see the figurine? Why? Why not? Fine. But if you try to run, just remember that my arrows are faster. She hands you the figurine, her trapped knuckles grazing your hand. She watches you examine it, wary, but curious. You raise the Adra bear, turning it in the light. As your eyes catch a tiny, glinting scratch, the scenery around you melts away. You're standing on a cliff overlooking the water, seeing through eyes that aren't your own. You catch the mask of beasts amidst the fresh scent of vegetation, and your heart beats a little faster. You'll have to watch your step up here. You look down just long enough to see the sharp, pale cliffs drop into the water hundreds of feet below you. I see a vision of cliffs high over the water. Does that sound familiar? Your question is greeted with shrugs and silence. I've got it. He's standing on a cliff. What are you talking about? What just happened? I'm a water. She blinks at you a few times, calculating. If you'd seen the way she stares at dead things, you'd know she's serious. You realize I've got no coin to give you, even if I did believe you. Come with me, I've got other business in the area and we can look for Presok on the way. And if this is your idea of a joke, you may be stuck with me for a while. Lead the way. You can trust me. Sure. You are a huntress. Ranger to be. Exact. Um What can I give you to make you hurt others better? Um
I don't think it works like this. I'll give some thing here. I'll give some survival. Ooh, vicious companion. Plus fifteen percent damage. Okay. Next level. And more stealth. More survival. Swift name. Plus twenty percent attack speed. Plus fifty reload speed. Okay. Next level. More stealth. More stealth. I said. Um. Uh, offensive. Two-handed, melee only. Wilder hunter, no, it's against wilder. Penetrating shot. Uh -huh. Next level. Next. Maybe vicious aim. No. Oh. Does 50% damage against target affected by damage over time? We're not really doing that. Deflection. Uh, plus strength is when hitting the same target as animal companion. Depends if it's AoE attacks animal companion plus 15. Uh, let's do the marking. Done. Sagani draws up beside you, her fox following at her heels, and takes a seat next to you. Even if you are putting one over on me. It's nice to have a hunting party again. You've been searching for Persuk for five years. Five years for me. Must be thirty-something for Ichimok. Hearing its name, the fox looks up. What an adventure! It certainly started out that way. It's been a long hunt. A long time away from my family. Before, I'd crossed the tundra of Nasitok following caribou herds. I didn't want to leave Kalu and our children, but I was eager to visit lands my people rarely do. But five years without finding him. It's like two hours of necking. I'm ready to be done with it. Why do you have to find him? Soul recovery is an old village tradition. We call it the Tarnak Elite Sock. Once in a generation, we seek the soul of a much respected and long dead village elder. We tell him what's changed in the village, how people remember him. The only other Tarnak elite suck during my lifetime happened when I was a girl, not long after Persok died. We feasted on blubber and fermented milk for a week, and we honored the chosen huntress as a hero. Then she left, and we returned to our duties. We still sang her name to the skies during festival season, but we otherwise didn't speak of her. What happened to her? I don't think she ever returned. It happens that way sometimes. She folds her arms, her expression sober. I'm sure your village still remembers you. You're kind to say so, but I'm not so proud that I need my name chanted in the meeting halls. It's not being forgotten by my village that troubles me. But sometimes I wonder how my husband and children remember me, if they think of me often. Of course they do. They must. I would like to believe it. And yet, sometimes days go by and I realize that they have not crossed my thoughts. Such days are rare, but they happen. She looks away, tugging at the strap of her quiver. It shames me to think of it, but more than that, it scares me. Still, there's no point in dwelling on it. More often I find myself wondering whether Persak will remember us. You claim to see souls. What do you think? Do you remember your past lives? In fragments. She leans on her breath closer. Really? What's that like? <laughs> Frustrating? I only wish I knew more. She sits back. I don't envy you. Guess I'm lucky I only have to worry about someone else's past life. Makes me wonder what Persak remembers about our village. Or if a turn at the wheel has yanked the details out of his mind like it does for most of us. What would you tell him about your village? Masuk is probably much the same as it was a hundred years ago. We live between tundra and frozen forests, and the land takes as much as it gives. But our hardships bring us together. 
and the elders truly unite us. They keep the stories of past generations and they guide us from season to season through good years and lean. Ituma brushes against her hip and she scratches his head. Recently, there's there have been a lot of good years. My own say we've had fewer clashes with neighboring villages thanks to the haunting territories that Persok helped establish. In bad years, we rely on trade with the merchants that pass our shores. We exchange walrus tusks and seal pelts for grains that last us the hard winters. Persok brokered a lot of those agreements too. She holds up the bare figurine. He got this from one of the Omoa ships that used to trade with us. It sounds like Persuk did a lot of it for your people. That's what I'm supposed to remind him. Sounds like you're on a hunt of your own, though. You feeling the thrill of the chase? Or ready for this to be over? I enjoy the adventure. Every day brings something new. She smiles. Refreshing, indeed. She rises and stretches, looking around. We've got darkness on our side. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's go. We have full party now, I think. Yep. Wait, and where am I supposed to take you? Mm -mm -mm. At top cliffs overlooking the water. The question remains if those cliffs are here or not. What Ready weapon do you use, bow crate? I hear something big. Of course I'm gonna go check okay, it out. Oh, 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 in my work, he's stuck. little endurance. Okay, you have more than I do. God damn it. What skills do you have? Marked prey and wounding shot twice. Oh, he's dead. At least we'll clear out those this place a little bit. Hmm? Oh, it fixed itself. Come on, hurry up. Like I said, those maps are big. <laughs> oh, there's the lurker. But you should not be hitting him first. Oh, he's stuck. Be stuck for oh, a long time. Um, Following your lead. crossbow. Wine drags swirl around the bottom of the clay jar. I 
I just hope we won't find the rightful owner of those crates. Oh. Again, this thing. You move away. This thing isn't doing the job. I'll let Margaret's fire bless this. You can trust me. Yeah, sure. Oh, I see you. I'm here. No, no, I want you to pick it up. The sparrow's nest is stuck between two angled slats. Or slates. Lion. A lion. Out in the wood. Well, not even wood, but on the road. Okay. Not to be this person, but this does not look like right place for Clium. Okay, before we start talking, I'll end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.